This episode of What If It's Cool is brought to you by Respo Clothing. Respo Clothing, we can get the latest merchandise from all the stars, including Luke Resner, Som, Savannah Rowe, Nova Nichols, and my personal favourite, Conflict Axiom. So make sure you check out Respo Clothing. You can find them on Facebook and on Instagram. MXW's Wheel of Torture is happening November 4th. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out to see what's going to happen when each wrestler spins that wheel. Mayhem Pro presents Relentless Rumble 2, featuring the 20-person Relentless Rumble match, happening Saturday, November 4th. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. Hey guys, just here to talk to you about a project that's just about to get started, um, but they do need a little bit of financial help. The project is called Here Is Your Winner, which is a short film being made about the wrestling industry. It's being started by uh, director Chris DiCarlo, a good friend of mine, and... Um, yeah, he does need your help, and this is going to be an amazing project. So please, if you can and have the means to, please uh, become a financial backer for this project and help get this project away. I love to help support uh, my friends and anyone who's got an amazing project or a dream that they want to do. Please help support Chris um, as he's doing this. And don't forget to use the hashtag Chase Martial Fans. Let's make it happen. And let's also make Here Is Your Winner a reality. Welcome to another episode of Water That's Cool, the show where we talk about anything and everything that is cool in the world today. I'm the water boy known as Daniel Paul Crow, and this episode, I have an interview with JXT. We talk about how he got into world of professional wrestling, the Twitter post that got my attention, and we talk about his love of footy. So sit back, relax, and enjoy wrestling, footy, and a pizza slice with JXT. Thank you so much for being part of the show. I know you are very busy and I really appreciate you being on the show. Um, I want to firstly ask because the very first time I found anything about you was actually through a tweet. Uh, was this uh, back in 2020 or was this 2029? I'm oh, sorry, 2029, 20, 2019. Thanks for having me on. I think the, <laughs> um, the tweet you're referring to is 2019. It was okay. my, um, my last attempt at going to the United States. Yeah. What, what, what exactly was happening there? So I'd just done, in one calendar year, I'd been to the state twice, states twice. And in the, early in the next year, I was going again um, for another three-month stint. I had a really good tour in April, a three-monther of 2018. So I went back again for 20... Sorry, you're right, it's 2020. 2019, I went successfully ah. twice. 2020, in March, I went to go again. And, um, yeah, I got pulled up at customs and they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm here, you know, for tourism because you're on a tourist visa. They're like, how much money do you have? And I'm like, I only have X amount, but I said, but I also have a job. So when I'm over here, I will still get paid. I can show you my pay slips. It shows I get paid monthly. I'll get paid again that same amount in a month's time and a month's time again. I'm going to go to Orlando. I'm going to do this, that. And you sort of, hop, you don't mention the wrestling thing. Mm. And then by the third time, they're like, if you, don't, if you don't tell us the full truth here, it's going to end bad for you. So I'm like, well, I'm here to wrestle. I said, I'm going to do some wrestling training. I said, I'm not going to be making money from it. Um, they didn't believe me. I get, and I guess when you look at the photos and stuff, like I wasn't wrestling, you know, they might say, oh, look, he had tried at WWE last time. But yeah, but that cost me thousands of dollars to fly here to fly to Orlando. And you know what I mean? Like it's, mm. yeah, I'm in the red by a long mile. Um but yeah, they um they said in the end they said you just have the wrong visa. I was put in prison or a holding cell for seventeen hours, mm. and they said, look, you got the wrong visa. You need a work visa for this. So it happens all the time. Just go back home, get the right visa, and come back. You just yeah. can't come back on this visa. So I they didn't tell me if I was banned. They didn't tell me, and I've looked it up. You can be banned for five years, ten years, twenty years permanently, or not at all. They said when you get on the plane, um, the plane that put me on back, there'll be a envelope with your papers and it'll explain everything. I got the envelope, have my phone and my wallet in it. They don't give it to you until it takes off. And there was no papers, nothing. I don't know if that was them being nice saying, hey, we didn't process it, you're going to be okay. Or that was, they just stuffed up. I don't know, but I have no idea. I've spoken to the embassy. I've spoken to lawyers. Um, all the advice I got was you shouldn't have been rejected. They had no reason to reject you, but they can reject you for no reason. I've had other people say it happened to them. Someone gobbled them in. Mm. And they got through because they were incorrect anyway. 
I don't know. I don't know if I can go back there. So if anyone out there can help me with this and let me know if I am allowed back in the United States, whether on a tourist visa, um, if, if, whether whatever the deal is, I would like the help if I could. Yeah. Well, did, yeah. did 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 you get to at least be on their version of border security? At least that would have been cool. Nah, but I was weary of it and looking out for it to try and stay off it. In the past, when Aussie wrestlers have been on that, it hasn't. It's been quite embarrassing for them. So I tried to. Oh wait, have we actually had? Have we actually had people on there on their border security? Because I know we had Chris yeah. Hero on ours, and I thought that was that was the most funny thing I've ever seen. Yeah, there was some Aussie wrestlers. I won't throw them under the bus. They might not want to be. Involved, no, no, so no, 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 don't, don't, don't need it. That's not the kind of. Yeah, show. they, they, they. <laughs> I felt bad for them. They, they, they copped it because you get you almost set up. You know what I mean. Mm. But um, yeah, there has been some trains on it before. Yes. Oh man. Oh. Oh well, you'll find well, it. It's pretty easy. I'm sure I can just do, just do a yeah. quick Google search to say who's on the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, not this is not a show where we shit on people. This is a show where we just talk about the good and the bad. And if we do mention people that we probably shouldn't, I'll bleep it out. Don't worry about that. I'll only shit on people if they deserve it. How's that? <laughs> and these people don't, so it's alright. Yeah. Um. Well, because of, because of, that was the first sort of introduction to you, I, I've always wanted to know, and I, I probably this is also a reason why I'm the world. Sh- this journalist out there um what does jxt uh stand for and um how did you come up with it um i tried to hide it for a long while so when we all start wrestling especially when you start as a 17 year old as a young dumb kid you come up with a pretty shitty wrestling name normally yeah um and i was josh x dream and i just hyphenated it to jxt and as time went on um actually mikey j who's one of the promoters for Renegades and Wrestle Rock at the time, when I started wrestling for one of his promotions, he's like, oh, we don't like Josh Extreme. Can we? They came up with some other name, which was also horrible. I'm like, can I just go by just JXT and just shorten it? And, you know, that way I'm still have to get new gear or anything. And it sort of fits. And they're like, yeah, we don't mind that. That sounds okay. So it just became JXT. But yeah. because of that, I tried to hide Josh Extreme for a long time. But it's pretty well known now. I do a lot of talk, like podcasts like this, and I run a wrestling school and, when you do things with newspapers and stuff, everyone's like, oh, his name's Josh, and it comes out. But yeah, I'm not too embarrassed of it now. I'm not as uh, fickle as I used to be. But, yeah, <laughs> Josh Extreme was my horrible 17-year-old name I come up with as a teen. What, what's so bad about that? I, I think it's actually a pretty cool name. But it's <laughs> yeah. like uh, you, you, you got you to elevate anyway. And, like, there's some really out there names to begin with. And I thought that's actually pretty cool. Um. I don't know, it just sounds corny, Josh Extreme. It literally is it like when you're a kid and you're wrestling in your backyard, as as kids do, which, again, we all did, we all do it, but then when yep. you're old enough, or in my case, you lie about your age and say that you're 18 when you're 17, you um you have the, I guess, respect for the business to go and get trained properly. Mm. Um, I would backyard wrestled as Josh Extreme because ECW came back and I was this huge ECW mark. So I was like, Josh Extreme, yeah, that's cool. And <laughs> all through high school, that was like my little nickname. And then once I started, I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to be Josh Extreme. And yeah, I regret that one. But oh, well, everything happens <laughs> for a reason, right? Yeah. Well, t- talk to me about how you got into the, got into the industry. Obviously, you've just you just sp- spoke out there that you lied uh, saying you were 18 when you were 17. Um, mm-hmm. where, where did you where did you begin your career? So my Oh, um, I went to my first local Aussie wrestling show when I was, I think, like six. I've been a, I'm a lifer. So for those who don't know what a lifer is, is um lifelong wrestling fan. My entire and my, but my entire life was I want to be a pro wrestler. Hmm. So someone that said when they're four, like I did, I want to be a wrestler, and they've stuck with it and gone on to it. And, you know, I didn't fall into wrestling when I was an adult or anything. And um, I went to local shows, and I knew who a lot of the local talent were. And I went when I was like fifteen, I reckon. I messaged Cracker Jack on MySpace. And I said, hey, you know, I, I'm a big fan of your stuff. I want to get into wrestling. And he's like, yep, um, there's George Julio's gym in Sunshine. You can go there and start training once you're 18. I'm like, sweet. I was 15. So I knew in the back of my head, George Julio's gym, once I'm 18, that's where I'm going. But then I started, I used to work at Safeway or Woolworths for the younger people. Mm-hmm. And Jake Navara, who coincidentally we now own Relentless School of Wrestling together with Phil, he... um. Someone he knew through, from work, he knew, like, people that I worked with, and they're like, oh, this is Jake, he's a wrestler. They're like, oh, Josh that works with us wants to be a wrestler his whole life. And he's like, oh, if he wants to be a wrestler, he can come down and do a tryout. Is he 18? And, and they were like, oh, I don't think so. And then when he asked me, I'm like, yep. But then, like, pretty soon, Jake's like, you're not 18, are you? I'm like, no, nah, but he kept that for me. <laughs> and then, yeah, I went and did my tryout at a show, with, at, before a show. 
I did like a little training session, I guess. And they're like, yeah, we'll tell you in a few weeks' time where the gym is and we'll invite you down. And then, yeah, I trained every week ever since. All right. Well, what what was it uh, when you when you started doing your training uh, where you, where the bug was actually bit? Was it from the first training session or was it from uh, the first couple of weeks? Where, where the what? Sorry, the bug. When, 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 when the bug was bitten on you. Um, the bug was bitten when I was like four years old. I was didn't, as in like my obsession of wrestling. No, 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 just like getting into the business and like, I, 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 I'm enjoying it right now and I want to do this for the rest of my life. That's never, even as a kid, even when I was 16, 17 and sort of gro- not growing out of wrestling, but falling out of wrestling, as a, like I wasn't watching it as a fan as often. Mm. I still love my wrestling and my old school wrestling, but I just wasn't into the current product. And I guess when you're 16, 17, I was playing a lot of serious sport at a high level and you're going out to parties and you're starting to become an adult. So I did, did as although it was in the background then, it's still my whole life. It was like, no, wrestling is what I'm going to do. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that never stopped. Um, there hasn't been one point ever where I've gone, I hate wrestling or I don't enjoy this or not. Like, it just doesn't enter my mind. <laughs> Oh, well, as you said, you're a lifer, and it just, it just, yeah. yeah. There's no one point, point one. You just, but what? But because obviously you've been a fan since you were four. What, what, um, what was it that uh, made you a wrestling fan? Was it now? Um, because I, I, I know we're roughly about the same age. Was it Hogan, or was it? Uh, hang on, I'm gonna say, or was it uh, Goldberg? I'm gonna say. Uh, yeah, no, you're close. The um, so I'm four. It's 1997. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm four years older. My older cousin Daryl, who I credit to this day, he um, he was he's think he's about five years older than me, or maybe even more, maybe six. And um, so I'm only four, and he's my older cousin because I'm the oldest in my family. So you sort of look up to your older siblings, or in my case, your older cousin. Yeah. And he loved wrestling. Him and his dad, my, like my uncle Dave, they were like mad wrestling obsessed too. So I would go to my old, my cool older cousin's house. And he would be playing, and he was like, oh, do you want to play at the PlayStation? And I didn't have one at the time. He said, we'll play this game, WWF Warzone. He goes, oh, we undertake it. You can be Kane. They're brothers, and we'll be a tag team. And I was like, this is the coolest shit ever. <laughs> and then um, we didn't have Foxtel, and I couldn't stay up late enough to watch WCW because I was four. So I never had that, I guess, that fandom where you flip the channel and then you see Austin or Goldberg or Rock or Hogan. It was just sort of, I was introduced to Kane and Undertaker through the game, and then I then I got the game. Then I would rent VHS. But you'd go from watching, you know, Halloween Havoc 98 or 97. Then the next VHS would be Royal Rumble 94. And then just all over. So I just became like an overall wrestling fan. There wasn't like one thing because I never followed a storyline or, or a story arc. I was I could never watch the weekly show. So I was never invested. I was just watching matches on pay-per-view and mm. the promo packages and playing the games. And then... I don't know what it was, but just the whole world just, I don't know, I just loved it. And I think some of it too is your cool older cousin likes this, so it's cool to like it. And it was cool. It's 97. We're in the peak of the Attitude Era. It's yeah. the coolest shit in the world, you know? So I just, yeah, ever since. I really miss those old days of just like playing video games and just getting into most of all that and also just like the VHSs. Like I think we're a little bit more um, polluted now with what, what content we have. And um, like, like like yourself, like I, I didn't have Foxtel growing up. Um, but during 97, 98, that's when I started getting Fox Cell and I, and I was doing the, the flipping and I was like, oh my God, this is f-ing awesome. Um, but, I, but I was very lucky enough to have my video easy. That's how f-ing old I am. Um, that they sold the, uh, the old v- VHSs of um, WWF and WCW for like two or three dollars. And, and I got like, I think I got like 15 in, in one hit. And it was just like oh, stuff in cool. the 80s, stuff in the early 90s. And I was just watching like that, that like notes. Well, I had the best of Raw as well. And yep. um, oh my God, I was just like, oh, wait, Scott Hall was Razor Ramon first? Yeah, which, yeah. and you know, it's, it's funny you say that because. I could never watch weekly television. I would just go off the games and then yeah. obviously watching random pay-per-views in random orders from whatever you could rent from Blockbuster Video Easy or whatever. So, yeah, I did the same thing. I was like, oh, Bret Hart's in WCW and WWF. So is Diesel. He's Kevin Nash. And Hall is Razor. And then so to, to me, the people I connected with most was, yeah, Bret Hart, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall. They were on all the VHSs I was watching. Mm. Yeah, uh, Hogan too. He's on both. So it's like because they were on both and they jumped, in my eyes, they were the biggest stars. And yeah, that's what I connected with. Yeah. 
well, I had I had no idea that there were two super companies. I just thought wrestling was wrestling, and wasn't until like like yourself, I, I had an old cousin who was really into wrestling too. Um, but I, I, he finally cleared me. He's like, WCW is where you know Hogan stuff are now, and you know all your cruiserweights and stuff are, are over there in WCW. But if you like, um, what was he saying at the time? Uh, not Bret Hart. Uh, Shawn Michaels and um, uh, Mick Foley. You got to you got to watch WWE. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, and then it, it, it was just like 98, 99, it, 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 it went from WCW and I went straight into WWF because, um, NWO was already gone, uh, by that point, uh, the finger point of doom had happened and See, I that, you, you had enough wherewithal to be aware of all that. It's funny because I hear about tribalism and especially now you see it, there's AEW fans and there's WWE fans, mm. whereas I was the complete opposite. Like, I'm like, no, I just love wrestling, all of wrestling. Like I love WCW, I love WWF when I could get a random like World Wrestling All-Stars or an ECW DVD, I'm like, yeah, this is cool because this is still wrestling. Like, yeah. I was never like, I like one or the other or one better. Like, I remember I had a babysitter once and she said, and we're watching WWF and she's like, WCW was so much cooler. And I'm like, what? Like, it's both, it's wrestling. The same wrestlers are on both the shows half the time. Like, how can you say that one's better than the other? Or how can you just like one? It's all wrestling to me, mm. you know? So I don't know. I just never, yeah, that tribalism, even still to this day, like, how can you, I can understand liking your preference, but it's all wrestling and the wrestlers are still wrestlers doing the same craft on different shows. I don't know how you can dislike one. Um, I can understand how you can like one more, but yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm not I'm not I'm not really tribal anymore. I mean, I, I do watch more AEW. That's because I, it's on times where I'm I'm not working, but um, I still love WWE. Like you said, wrestling is wrestling, and yeah. it's a great and it's a, it's a fucking great community to be in. Can be, it <laughs> cannot be. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, for sure. Like it's funny, we um uh, a lot of times when WWE would be out here in Melbourne, we would hand flies out after the shows because you know it's like how is there fifteen thousand people at Rod Laver Arena to watch wrestling when we do wrestling, we get 20, 30, 40 people come. Like why why are they not? And I can vividly remember very regularly handing out flies and like local Melbourne Australians being like, no, we only go to the good wrestling or we only go to WWE. We're not going to that stuff. Like looking down on us, and I'm like. How are you hating us? Like we're Aussies, like you doing what you're paying to go watch with the Americans. Like where's like it should be should be getting around us more. But luckily, yeah, there's a lot more people getting around us. Aussies yeah, trying to wrestle. But well, yeah, that's um, that's a real thing. I've said this multiple times. Uh, as much as I love, you know, the Americans, the Japanese, and the European wrestling, Australia has the better talent, hands down. And um, like I, 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 I like I'm more watching the the um the australian talent now than i am watching uh any of the other stuff because it's just it's f-ing awesome like i, I think i think good to hear like, hopefully hopefully the rest of the world thinks that too and then we'll start well fingers know, keep crossed. picking up yeah for sure yeah well speaking speaking of um you know like uh, people coming from overseas and everything i, I want to address something because i didn't know this um until joey janella said this that you were injured um and the, i want to take it back to last year at uh, world series wrestling where you wrestled him and he said that you had what was the what was the injury? A torn quad or was it a torn ACL? No, no, I had a yeah, a blown ACL, torn meniscus, and broken bones in my leg. And you still and you still and you still wrestled that amazing match with with him. Yeah, like I noticed it watching back and even out there, like my knee buckled five times. I couldn't get enough force through my leg to put him to spear him through a door because my leg I couldn't put weight on it. Mm. Um, but yeah, like I remember I was getting it looked at by the physio before the match. And he's like, so your ACL is like ruptured. I'm like, yeah, it's gone. And then Brian Cage is like, well, if it's gone, you can't break it again, can you? I'm like, it's exactly right. Strap yeah. it up and get on with it. But yeah, yeah, I hurt my knee pretty badly. Had to have surgery, and I was yeah, it was, it was about six months before I could get the surgery, and then nine month recovery till the first match back. So in that six months while I was waiting for surgery, I was like, fuck this, I'm still going to wrestle. Mm. You know, so I just yeah worked around it as best I could. You know, I'm looking back, the matches weren't obviously weren't great, but you know, I'm still I'm I'm always more proud of that match with Joey because yeah, I did have my leg was not even hanging on properly and it kept buckling on me and I was still able to put on that match and work past it, you know. Well, I did I did call it a uh, match of the night for that for that um particular portion of World Series wrestling because I just thought it was f-ing amazing. And then all of a sudden when he got on the mic and said that you were you were injured, it was just like I didn't f- notice and i've watched it in replays and i still i still can't really see that you were you were hurt i think we're gonna yeah. after after have another viewing again after what we just talked about here 
I might see it, but at the same time, it's not gonna it's not gonna ruin the magic because you're a fucking trooper for doing that, man. Nah, thanks. I'm. I've been always been a big proponent of like, not it's not was I wasn't even booked before that, but like you you take your bookings, you make your bookings, and like if I always always say if I can walk, I can wrestle, and mm. I could still walk, so I'd be able to wrestle. Sure, it wasn't at the level I would like, but yeah, I think the fact that people like yourself had said, "Oh, this is match of the night." And then they found that out. I was like, yeah, like, you know, I was very proud of that. And yeah, like, you know, some people will get a corky or, you know, her bust, like break a nail or hurt their finger and they'll, oh, you know, they'll stop wrestling, which is fine. And sometimes, you know, if you have a serious injury, you shouldn't have, I maybe shouldn't have wrestled. But my theory is that, you know, the crowd and the putting on a performance for the audience, because I love wrestling so much and I want them to have a good show more than I care about my own health. Mm. So yeah, you show must go on you know, and within what you can do. So, yeah, I was very, I'm still very proud of that, you know, to mm. this day. No, that's great. Um, I wanted to, I do want to uh, ask you, because obviously Joey Janola, he is an enigma in the, in the, um, in the wrestling scene. I just, I, I just think he's absolutely amazing. What is your best story with Joey Janola? <laughs> Um, I got hands. Let, 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 let me just rephrase this for a second. What can you legally tell me? Um, well, there's a story with him. He, he got off, so it's okay. But he, um, there was an incident where he threw a pizza at someone in a pizza shop. Okay, like like a full pe- slice of pizza, and and I was, well, yeah, they were, that's probably the funniest one. Um, but yeah, he's just, I don't know, he's just cool to hang out with, you know. Um, and we could get quite drunk. He's um, he's a lot quieter than people expect. People think he's gonna be this big, loud, rowdy crazy dude but he's quite the opposite mm. he's quite quiet and stuff but no yeah the, i remember him throwing a big slice of deep dish pizza at someone who made some pretty snide comments to him which was pretty funny oh god only jolly janelle could throw a pizza and get away with it <laughs> yeah i remember being like what is going on and then his mates like he just threw that piece of pizza and i'm like what yeah <laughs> jersey shore it gets crazy oh fair enough yeah. um oh my god uh, the, uh, let's move back to back to the injury for a second. How um how did that actually happen? What um what what yeah. match was it from? I wish I could say I did it wrestling. Okay. Um, oh, okay. I, so it wasn't from wrestling. Where did, where nah, did nah. From? So I um love my footy, my Aussie rules Australian football, mm-hmm. and I am um, very involved with the Melton Footy Club, the Bloods, and I was helping with my girlfriend's team, the women's team, and the assistant coach. No, the coach of the reserves came and said, "Hey, have you thought about putting the boots back on?" And I was like, nah, you know, not at all. And I said, I can't train. I run a wrestling school. I don't have the time to commit properly to train. I wouldn't be fair to take someone's spot. Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, look, I'd rather people that can play than people that can train. So if you can't train, that's fine. But I would like you to play, you know, if we can get you work it out with your wrestling. And I'm like, let me see what I can do. And here's the thing. We'd just come out of COVID. So we hadn't done anything for two years. Um, and I looked at it. I was like, oh. I'm 28, uh, 28 or 29. I think I'm 29 at the time. I'm like, all right. I'm, no, I was 28. I'm like, I'm probably not going to get a chance to play footy at this level ever again. So it's probably my last chance to have a proper crack. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, screw it. You know, let's. I won't be able to play every week, but I'll try and put the season, which was stupid because we we're already in round one. So I hadn't done a preseason and I'd torn my hamstring wrestling oh, no. uh, a few months prior. But it was like months prior. Like that would all heal, but. You're still not 100%. You still hadn't fully recovered, I guess. So you're sort of compensating. Uh, I played my first match back. It was rusty as, barely got a touch. Second match in, I killed it, kicked the goal from 40 out on the run. I'm fl- like flying on, off the edge of my seat. I'm like, how good is this? Back playing footy and playing well. And then, yeah, third match in, I just, uh, first contest, snap. There it went. Oh, no. Yeah. But um, that's it's almost good. I guess the injury is never good. But the fact that I didn't do it wrestling, I'm not worried about doing it wrestling because it wasn't a wrestling movement. It wasn't something I did in the ring that caused it. Um, I was overweight. I was at, I was compensating for a bad hammy. I hadn't done a preseason. I wasn't fit enough to be playing footy at that level. And we have a brand new footy oval at the time, which is very hard. So all of that sort of played into it. And I was, yeah, it's something I had to give. Okay, fair enough. But I, I can understand why, why you would want to be um, be playing in, in that uh, in footy because it's a besides wrestling i love footy as well i i I don't i don't particularly like watching it anymore because i think the game has got gotten very soft but i still love playing it like oh 
Like, a lot, okay. lot same. As I was like, I miss it. Even just training, like my mates were like, oh, training. I'm like, nah, like, because I hadn't played in so many years. I was like, I'm loving training. This is amazing. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I shouldn't have. I guess thing, like, I'm an idiot. I'm a wrestler. What am I doing? Why am I trying to play free? Because now I spent a whole, almost uh, pretty much a whole year where I couldn't wrestle or couldn't wrestle properly mm. just to have a kick of a footy. You know, I should have just, yeah, you've got to pick it. you got to pick your one thing. And I think it's something I've always done in life. I try to do too much or I try to do everything. I should have just been like, you know what? You're a wrestler. Do your wrestling, mate. You know, yeah. stick at it. Let your friends play footy. They're good. They're better than you anyway. Let them play footy. Oh, but, it, but footy is such a great game. But I've got, I've got to ask on camera. Who do you go for? Because like the colours that you're wearing, I'm going. I'm going to guess you're a Collingwood supporter. Or do not disrespect me like that, please. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just going by the colours, but you know, like, nah, nah, the, the wrestling colors, school. Like is, I see it. <laughs> the wrestling school is black, white, and silver. But um, the um, I'm from Melton, which is out west of Melbourne, and the western suburbs people, everyone who lives there, should go for the Western Bulldogs. So I've been a twenty. I'm a twenty year member as of this year. Nice. There you go. Well, I'm a cat supporter, and um, unfortunately, we we both had uh, well, we both had shit years. Uh, sorry, shit, shit. Years, yeah. Uh, but hey, we both we, that's we both won. Yeah, hey, we both we both won um premiership, yeah. so we can we can we can hold our heads high. Um, yeah, exactly. It could, it could be worse. You could be back in for Essendon, you know. Hmm. Well, at the but, same, <laughs> oh jeez, but yeah, uh, but at least at least we can say we both we both beat uh, Collingwood, and um, let's hope. Because uh, by the time this episode comes out, the grand final's already gone. Hopefully, they don't win a premiership. Oh, I reckon they. I reckon they will. But yeah, we'll see. I cannot put up with the next nine months of all my friends who are Collingwood supporters telling me that they won't. <laughs> so please, for the love of nah. God, please do not let Collingwood win. See, I'm not too much of enough supporter. Me and my friends, like they're way better footy players than I am. But like, <laughs> we're just general for fans of footy. Like, obviously, we love our teams. And I'm a hardcore Bulldog supporter, but like. I don't get angry at the other teams. I'm not angry. I'm not like, oh, I don't want this team to win because their supporters are annoying. Like, that's footy. Let like, people love it. You know, like it's just all part and parcel of it. And, yeah. Oh, fair enough. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm the complete opposite. I, I, you know, I get, I get pretty pissed off when when Geelong lose. Um, I get upset when we lose. Don't worry, but I'm not going to get yeah. But you know, but I can still see other fans that when they're beaten as being happy and excited. And I'm like, yeah, well. Every day. someone's got to win and it's not always you yeah you know my, my dad's very much uh, yeah he's a hardcore nuffy don't worry you'll see him arguing with people in the comments very regularly <laughs> oh okay well i want to yeah. talk to me about um the uh your wrestling uh, wrestling uh relentless uh school of wrestling um mm-hmm. personally how did it how did it come about and um why did you start it so it's 2019 i just come back from the successful american trip and myself and the Big Rig, Fun Time Phil, we trained with Jake Navarra. We did strength and conditioning training in his personal training studio. And we, at the time, I wasn't training anywhere and I wasn't really happy with places I was training at. I had trained at in Australia previously at the time. And I'd just come back from Creator Pro in New Jersey and I was like, this school is amazing. Like the training, the way they structure it, the way they do it, I'm like we need that here. And then I think I was just saying that training just out of frustration. Mm-hmm. And um, Jake says, well, I want a bigger personal training studio to expand my business. Um, and Phil at the time already owned a ring. So they go, for Jake's over, if we put the ring in it, we could make the little bit of extra rent I need to cover the bigger gym. And we could also run a wrestling school out of there to cover that, and, you know, make up for it. And we could do that. And at the time, there was no wrestling training on west of Melbourne, period, let alone within an hour of where we lived. So in Melton, we're like, there's no one out here training people. We're frustrated at the other at the training we're doing or had done previously. So like, why why don't well Jake came up with the idea? He's like, why don't we start a school? And I was like, I'm not good enough to train people. What are you talking about? There's no way I'm gonna put my name out there and put my head on the chopping block. But um he talked me into it. And then yeah, we've sort of grown into what we have now, which has been running for three years strong, almost four, which is great. Um, and you and you do the is it now I, I, I might be wrong is it the monthly showcase or or, or or quarterly showcase that you guys do with your uh, trainees as well? No, monthly. I bloody it's monthly. Mm. Um, it's when we can do them. We do our regular Mayhem Pro like our big events in Marcus March. We do three or four of them a year. This year we've only done three. Sadly, mm. oh, we're only going to end up doing three. Um, but the showcase shows only started this year because we were like, what do we do with our school? What what should we? And we only run shows because we have a school 
yeah. which is why often we get wrestlers, hey, how, how do I get booked? Or, hey, I'd love to work for you. It's like, sorry, if you don't train at our school, we have no reason to book you. Our, school, our wrestling company purely pretty much runs as a means to an end for to break our students in and to get them experience and for them to get better. And very often we book things that aren't necessarily the best thing for the show, but so that that student or that wrestler gets to learn a different skill or they get to work on something that they're not great at yet, but they're only going to get better with experience. And we couldn't keep asking other promotions to give our guys, you know, a shot or give one of our students a break or, you know, so it's like, well, we need to run our own shows. So we run our showcase shows, which are at our, at our gym in Melton. And then we run our bigger shows in back of Smash. And we've been running the bigger shows since, yeah, I think since 2020 at least. So like, so yeah, since we started the school just a little bit after and the showcase shows have only started this year, but they've been great. You know, they've been really good. Oh, the, the one thing I love about um, Mayhem is that you guys do put uh, do some absolutely stellar shows and you do put them on, on YouTube for free. Firstly, thank you for doing that because that, that is by design too. Yeah, yeah. Mm, no, because some because uh, I, I, I've been trying to go and I said this to um to James Bolton like I, I keep promising. I'll oh, don't worry, I'll come, I'll come to, to come on things. And every time it's either too far for me or I'm working and I'm just I'm just too exhausted. I definitely got to come out and check out uh, one of them live because I actually really enjoy a lot of the stuff that you do. And um, like when I did the reaction to his uh, debut match as uh, Jab. Um, Man, I love the quality of it, but also just just the atmosphere felt so good there. And um, yeah, I think I think it's amazing what you guys do over there. No, nah, thanks. I think that was the the YouTube thing is one part, but the whole the way we run the promotion, it's a little bit bare bones in the sense that we don't have a screen and we don't overly do the video packages or the production. Like we don't have coloured lighting and stuff. But we were like, this is independent pro wrestling, and we want to give our students like this is what it's meant to be, or this is what it is at, at its core, at least. But we still want to do things properly. The way we run it, like even little things from the the, the pre-show music, the way we have the ring announcer Shane Hero, the way we have him run the show, the way we structure in between the matches, the way we put the matches and the cards together, and even just the the presentation is like purposely done to teach the students this is how it should be, or at least it should be at the bare bones. Like obviously, when you've got the bigger promotions that have all the production and stuff, they just are a, a build on or an adaptation of that, which is why they get they're successful. Okay. So all that stuff's by design to help teach these guys and help, you know, our goal as a school is to make wrestling where we live better. So Western suburbs of Melbourne, obviously we run our shows in Mountain Back of Smash, and then as Victoria as a whole, and then of course broader Australia. So our students start wrestling out in different states and stuff, which I'm hoping is yeah, adding to making wrestling where we live better. And one of those things is, yeah, the YouTube. So one of the biggest pet peeves I had as a wrestler myself was I have wrestled that many shows that I've matches that I've never seen the promoters keep on their personal hard drive or on their camera somewhere. And they lock away like it's gold that no one's allowed to see or touch. You ask them for it. They get angry. They wouldn't put it anywhere. They own the footage, but no one sees it. So what's the point? And if the tree falls in the woods and no one hears it, did it even fall? Hmm. So you would do these shows that no one ever seen. So my biggest thing was when we do shows, so the shoot showcase shows are purposely not filmed because they're, almost like a student like an in-house school show to teach and you know help educate that the main main shows the main pro ones the big ones we do they're purposely put on youtube for free so there's no paywall if you want to watch a james bolton match you can go here's a link to four of them and you can just watch the whole show because it's about getting our guys their break in the business their start and for them to be able to get out there and if they can't show someone their match without a paywall or it's doesn't get uploaded anywhere at all well then what we're doing a disservice to the students you know it's you know we're trying to get them out there even for myself i was always trying to get my name out there and the more shows i did that never saw the light of day it's like well what's the point you know what are we doing here? no very good point i don't, I, I still I, I don't understand why uh people hoard footage uh because when, when oh. i had vixen, when i had vixen on here and she also said on the on the show that she that, that there's a, a good portion of her career that's um not out there on the internet and probably never yep. will be and both of us, yeah, yeah, because like uh, some of the some of the stuff I've seen of your of yours, uh, you know, whether it be from APW or even from Mayhem, are fantastic. I'm, I'm thinking, what am I missing now? You know, yeah, like, there's and there's so much good, and I even I did a vlog. It's on YouTube still called JXTV. And mm -hmm. during lockdown, I'd hit a hundred episodes, so I did a hundred episodes. Like a, it's a movie length. It's like a movie. It's an hour and a half. And originally, what I was going to do is I was also going to do a matches segment, but contacting the promoters and being like one this is my idea are you okay with it the first thing they say is how much are you going to pay me so hang on 
I'm putting your thing up there for free with my thousand whatever followers and subscribers of footage that you are not using that no one's ever seen. And I remember one promoter, I said, I had this really good match for your promotion. I said, do you have the footage? Because I've never seen it. And the response was, yeah, but it's unedited. I said, well, how are this? I'll edit it for you if I can put it on my YouTube channel. Mm. And they said, well, how much am I going to make? How much are you going to pay me? And I'm like, hang on, I'm doing your work. I'm editing your show that you haven't done. It's four or five years old. Yeah. No one's going to see unless I do this. And you want me to pay you for it? Like where? But yeah, that's why we put our stuff up on YouTube for free. Yeah. Oh, no, the, the, uh, good on you, but that's. Yeah. And obviously no one's ever seen that match and I probably never will now, but yeah, is what it is. Oh boy. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the, yeah. The politics of wrestling. And it's like, to me, it's a no brainer. I was like, I'll do your work for you, but I, I digress. I shouldn't yeah. find that. It's yeah. happened. It's done. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you've just prompted me to ask this question because I, I didn't have a show on my list here. Because uh, when I had James Bolton on here, he he mentioned that um, that you that you were helping him pre- prepare for his uh, young rock, uh, young rock appearance. Uh, but for, uh, but apparently, you guys had a um, uh, Memphis style match. Yeah, can you talk me through it? And is that avail- is that available anywhere for us to see? Um, I think James filmed it because I think he needed to show it to the people that um casted that because i think that was the idea we needed to we needed to show james's ability to portray jeff jarrett mm. so i was like sweet well and you know i just picked you know you, you look at your jackie fargo your jerry lawler your jeff jarrett's so, uh, what are the things these guys do specifically and the way they move and the way they wrestle that we need to put into this match and make the make that style within what we did mm. um yeah i'm pretty sure it was like in between you know you're, when we're in and out of lockdown so it was in between one, um, and we went down to the school just on our own one day when no one else was there. And yeah, we shot it. We worked on it, and then we shot it. Um, he might have the footage, so if it's there, uh, James might have it. But I'm pretty sure it was filmed. Just you know, it was like a casting, mm. and he needed to show that. But yeah, you know, the Memphis style punches, the strut, the way they sell. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun actually. <laughs> So was that so when when you guys were filming it was it could being called on the fly or did you already have a sort of an idea before you before you started doing it? Um, we had certain spots we wanted to hit because mm-hmm. we needed to show James doing certain things. Mm-hmm. Like there were certain things where it needs this and it needs that. But yeah, all the in between we just called on the fly. Okay, fair enough. Um, and also too, we're at at our relentless school of pro wrestling on our own, so we can do whatever we want. So if it doesn't go well, we could just cut it, I guess, or whatever. But yeah, that's one thing we're big on at the school is like. Just working on the fly because you need to be ha- to have that. Not so much that you need to be able to call a whole match on the fly to do it yeah. all the time, but things always go wrong in the ring. And if you can't call and you can't work, well, then you're going to be sitting there going, "What do I do? What do I do?" So yeah, we just did a lot of it on the fly. Well, fair enough. Who are you? Who, uh, so obviously he was trying to be Jeff Jarrett, and I think he said he was also apply, uh, trying to be Jerry Lawler. Is that right? Or is it? Was, was that, yeah, was that- I think when we did it, we were we were honed in on him doing Jarrett. So I was trying to be more like Lawler. Yeah. And Did I was you... doing, you know, the, the, the fist off the second and th- we'll throw in those big haymaker punches they do and, um, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, God, I really want to see this footage now. So, James, if you're watching, can you please let me know if you have this footage because I want to f***ing see it. I, I'm I, probably going to look horrible because I'm like, I'm just here to make James look good. I'm not paying attention to myself. <laughs> uh, oh, well. But, but no, that's, but that's it was fun, you, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. When you start a wrestling school, especially in the early days, that's not something you expect. You know, it's like, hey, I'm getting pitched to do play Jeff Jarrett in a TV show. Can you help me train to be Jeff Jarrett? And it's mm. like, whoa, okay, that's a yeah, that's not something you expect. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. It mm. was um a great experience for myself. You know, to see what James was asked to do and went through when we experienced, like it helped me, let alone helped him. So yeah, it was mm. an awesome thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a he's a fantastic actor, and he did an amazing job. And I think he has a lot, a lot to thank for you for doing that, for bringing the best out of him for doing that. And I thank you. For no, that. sure, like he's he's a great dude, and um, you know, it's whenever the, anyone that's come through our doors always is like, I guess it's all because of you, and thank you. It's like, no, they put the work. He did put the work in. You know what I mean? And you know, he paid to come to the school. My biggest thing is, I don't want ever anyone to ever walk away from our wrestling school and say I didn't get my money's worth. So, yeah, if I can help people like him do awesome things like that, then, you mm. know, it's always a great thing. Yeah, very good. Well, we've come to the simple question here on What If It's Cool. What is something that you find cool that nobody else does? 
throwing me under the bus. No, nah, <laughs> I wish I knew. If I knew like a week ago, I would have thought about heaps of things. Um, what do I find cool? I find Triple M's uh, The Rub. So it's a Saturday show. They yep. do it from 12 to 2. And I listen to the old ones on YouTube. There's a YouTube account, an unofficial YouTube account that has documented all of them in chronological order from 2012 to 2016. And I listen to them in order. And then I go back and listen to them again. So it's Spud Frawley, it's Gary Lyon, it's JB and Damian Barrett. And it's them just, you know, uh, ripping on each other. Oh, I, me- I, a, remember, a- I remember the show. I was just like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, are you serious? So the whole thing is on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. So every in order. So you go to like, it starts in like whatever it is, April 2011 or 2012. And it's like, hey, it's round one here. It's Saturday afternoon at the G. And, you know, and then, so that's why like, Spud has such an influence on like my whole, I guess, not persona, but like when I do things like this in radio, like how up he was and how funny and entertaining he was, it was unreal. So I've got a friend at work that listens to it at the same time. We're listening to it together. I've got <laughs> another friend. He's a good footy player and a few other boys from footy that also listen to it at their work. So we sort of send the videos to each other and it's just great radio. It's the best radio I've ever heard. And oh, that's you got, you got to send me the link to this. I, I, I'm The I'm YouTube run. Right. Look the up YouTube the, the YouTube rub and it's the Triple M rub and they're all they still do it to this day. So like this week's Triple M mm. is there and it's in segments too. So it's not like you have the whole Saturday show. It's like segment one goes for like eight minutes. So mm. I come home, I'm having a shower, I chuck one of them on. It's an eight minute shower, and you know, then you just listen to that. And I'm driving on a short trip, I put one of them on. Yeah, oh. if I'm ever having a bad day, I just put on Spud Frawley. You know, one of his funny segments, and oh, it's the greatest, it's the funniest and best stuff you'll ever listen to. Oh God, I'm I I I am so glad that that that, that is around because I I agree with yeah. you. That, that is incredibly cool. I I I don't I don't I obviously clearly don't uh, listen to it anymore, but uh, that old stuff. Oh, got to get onto it now. Yeah, like um, I still listen to them, like this one, the Friday Huddle. They do Friday and Saturday now, but yeah, that old stuff. That twenty, whenever Spud's there, so from twenty eleven through to twenty sixteen is. Mm. Like JB always says when they talk, so like his radio work was like liquid gold. But it was amazing, yeah. Well, they're all they're all entertaining, and and, and when you say that, it's like I'm, I I fucking miss the footy show so much when I when, yeah. when, when you like. Let, let's be honest the the last the last uh, time it was on, it was okay. It wasn't great, but yeah, footy is so different now that we need it back. Like it yeah. is, it's either taken too seriously or it's too soft. We need yeah. some comedy in it. I mean, some of the shows they put put on now are not, are not even just entertaining. They just they just try to be funny, but it's just like corny and shit. Yeah, I have um my friends because I don't watch TV because like I have my full time job because yes, us wrestlers you know, in Australia have to work a real job still. Yeah, I have my full time job. I finish. I go to the gym. I go to the wrestling school. I go home, shower, sleep, repeat. That's every weekday for me until the weekends. Mm-hmm. So I never watch much TV. But my friends are like, oh, have you got any um. TV series. I'm like, yeah, Front Bar season finale is next week. Front Bar and the Sunday Footy Show are the two shows I watch weekly, and yeah, that light-hearted footy entertainment. I uh, I don't know the the Sunday Footy Show. It and I'm being incredibly biased when I say it has not been good since the '90s. Unfortunately, I I I, I don't know what it is about it. Um, because I used to watch that. I, I I don't I don't think I ever missed an episode from '92 to '99. I watched every yeah. single episode, and it was that good. But this from 2000 onwards, nah, just couldn't, couldn't, can't stand it. No, that's fair. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Oh, because but... it, it, it's, um, uh, oh my God, what's his name? Not, not Lou, uh, Maxi Walker. Uh, he, he was, he was just a different beast when he was, when he was doing, when, uh, was it Maxi? Yeah. yeah, it was Maxi Walker. Yeah. Plus, um, too, they have to adapt with the times and modernize and become a little bit more professional, too. Yeah. And, so things have to change. Yeah. That's the reality, really. Yeah. yeah. You've either got to just either, Learn to love it and enjoy it for what it is. And if you don't, which is completely understandable, it's not what it was and it's never going to be. So, yeah, that's just the way it is, sadly. Well, I miss the, the one thing I do miss the most, and, and, and it's sad we're never going to ever have it again, the grand final footy show, uh, whenever they did the uh, the performances with the stars and everything. And yeah. Like, oh. Well, they still do a grand final show, but uh, yeah, I don't think they'll do like a player review like they used to, yeah. Oh, but how, but how good were they? I mean, like, yeah, yeah they're, they're like heaps of, heaps of people who are, like stiffs and – I'm not going to name names, but they, but you know they'd be doing doing that stuff, and you're just like, oh my god, they actually can be entertaining and and lifeful, but we're yeah. not going to get that again. Yeah, I was lucky. I went to one of the I think the third or fourth last grand final footy show. Mm. So and I still got there, which 
at the time I was like, oh, it's not a big deal, you know, but yeah, looking back, it's pretty cool. But yeah, <laughs> there's my weird thing that I love. Hey, JC, where firstly can we find uh, Relentless and Mayhem on all socials? So Relentless School of Pro Wrestling, um, at Relentless underscore SPW for School of Pro Wrestling. But if you just Google us, our website is IamRelentless.com.au, which mm-hmm. has Relentless Gym and Relentless School of Pro Wrestling as a part of Relentless Gym. Um, we have no tryout either for people too. So, um, yeah, if you want to come down and be a wrestler, sign up and you can start to, You can start on Monday. You know what I mean? Um, so just, yeah, the first thing is step the door. And if people are like, oh, you know, I'm not fit enough or I don't know what I'm doing. We have a gym connected with us and Jake is a training strength and conditioning coach and put you on a nutrition plan and a training course to get you to that level if you don't feel you're ready. Or a lot of our wrestlers do that along with the wrestling. So Relentless School of Pro Wrestling, Mayhem Pro is easy, at Mayhem Pro. Um, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, youtube.com forward slash Mayhem Pro, which is where, like you said, all of our full shows are up there for free. Yep. Watch all of them in chronological order. And um, I'm at JXT underscore official on all the socials, even TikTok. Um, and, yeah, please follow me because all having a following and having people follow you so you can promote your stuff is so pivotal in, in such a small wrestling scene we have in Australia and compared to the rest of the world. So um, any help we can get with followers is appreciated. So, yeah, mm. at JXT underscore official. The one thing about because you mentioned TikTok, the one thing I love about your TikTok is your your little your little vlogs that you do when you're set, setting up and everything. I I, I awesome. live for those. I love them. All right, it means we got to keep doing more. Do you know what's hard, especially when they're our shows when you're promoting and wrestling and doing all that. Yeah, I just don't end up having the time to film enough stuff. Um, but yeah, I've realized people do love them, so I've got to try and put a bit more effort into doing them. Hopefully, once I finish moving house and life calms down a little, I can um, yeah, do them a little more because yeah, I think. That's sort of where the JXTV vlogs of the 2000s or noughties or what do you call it, the 2010s have evolved to. Mm. So, yeah, those short snippets. So, yeah, the more we can engage the fans and have people like yourself, you know, care about what we're doing, yeah, the better I'm doing. So thanks for letting me know what you enjoy. That's another thing too, fans. Tell us what you like. Because yeah, exactly. We'll like, do more of it for sure. Mention, mention in the comments that. on this video if you're watching on, on YouTube or, you know, send a DM, send, send a DM to JXT and let him know what the f- you want because the you know like yeah he's here to, he's here to entertain you guys so you know make, make it your own with it with him on that one for sure um but That's please but, but please continue making those vlogs as yeah like i said i keep hanging on to them i, I love watching them awesome I'm, yeah <laughs> all right no, well, that's my job for my next show task yeah accepted nice uh jc thank you for being part of what it's called no, nah, that's it. What if it's cool? Thanks for having me. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nah, thank you. And that's the end of that episode. Want to be featured on What If It's Cool? Want to know someone with an amazing story that needs to be told? Reach out to me. I can be reached on what if it's called business at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Want more for What If It's Cool? Make sure to check out the YouTube channel where you can find latest episodes of Mukbang Around, Reaction, and of course, the podcast. And don't forget to follow What If It's Cool on all socials. You can be found at What If It's Cool. Keep that support coming. And until next time, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.